Yo, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another exciting Swift tutorial video on the channel here today. I uh, hope you're having a fantastic morning. Now in the very last video, I introduced quickly uh, how to use something called a semaphore to help us monitor a couple of different tasks and to notify ourselves uh, when those tasks are actually complete. Now at the very end of that video, a lot of you guys asked me uh, the same exact question as to why you would want to use a semaphore versus a dispatch group. So today's lesson, I want to go over a couple of different examples in code as to you know why you would use one over the other. All right, but basically long story short, if you have a lot of different tasks and if these tasks aren't exactly touching a shared resource, I feel like you probably want to go with a dispatch group. And then on the other hand, if you have a lot of different tasks accessing a shared resource, uh, chances are you want fine grain control with a dispatch semaphore instead. Okay, having said all of that, let me right now dive into Xcode and show you a couple of different examples on how to set up a dispatch group and then how to replace it with a semaphore instead and why exactly we want to do this. Okay, hopefully that sounds good. Let me switch over to the Xcode editor right now. Uh, this project is nothing but a very simple single view application. You can see our view controller. We have a simple fetch image call just to simulate some kind of task. It's going to fetch an image here and call the completion block like so. Uh, nothing too fancy. And this image is actually right over here in the simulator for the Tinder Firestore course. If you want to check it out, the link is down below. Okay, so now what I want to kind of illustrate is how you would set up a dispatch group. So let's say dispatch group is over here. I'm just going to type this out relatively quickly. Uh, the whole reason why you want to use a dispatch group is to have some kind of mechanism to notify yourself when a couple of different tasks are finished. So you want to notify yourself inside of the main queue, so dot main and hit enter for the execution. And for this guy, we'll print out finished uh, fetching images and let's say dot right here and close this off. Now, if you just run this simple uh, two lines of code or what is this five lines of code, you'll see this being printed out down below. And now that you kind of see what a dispatch group is doing, why don't we introduce some tasks such as fetching an image? So just call this, you know, this function down below called fetch image, hit enter here. I don't really care about those parameters for this exercise, so just use an underscore. And down below, what you want to do is just say print out uh, finish fetching, let's say image one and close that off and let me just copy this guy and paste it in here and finish fetching image two and then let's do this uh, one more time why don't we uh, replace that with a three obviously and let's just kind of see and examine the console down below to see what exactly is going on uh, you'll see that we actually print out this statement here first and then we print out uh, finish fetching image one two and three and why exactly is that happening? Well, we actually kind of want to see this at the very end here, right? And the reason why you see this first is because these are background tasks and basically it goes down here. It doesn't execute all this stuff yet, but once you reach down here, it'll execute this because you don't have anything that's kind of bumping up your dispatch group counter. So what I mean is every time you want to bump up the counter, you want to call enter here, enter here and enter there. Now, every time you call an enter, you want to make sure to call a leave as well. So dispatch group and leave like that. Now let's kind of print this out or paste that in there. Uh, for every enter call, you'll increment by one and the leave will decrement by one, I believe. So whenever you have three enters and three leaves, you'll finally kind of be notified when the third leave is executed. And you'll see everything now is being printed out correctly. Uh, finish fetching image one, two, and three. So in a nutshell, that's basically, you know, 99% of the time when you're using a dispatch group, this is the pattern that you'll have inside of your application code, hopefully if you're doing it correctly. So the other question is, well, the main question that I want to answer is, you know, why exactly do we want to use a dispatch semaphore instead? So let's say a semaphore equals dispatch semaphore right here. And this comes with a value constructor. Just use a zero right inside there. 
All right, so the question that I want to answer is, what exactly is this shared resource doing here, right? So what is this? Well, let's just say inside of your fetch image task here, right? Let's say you access your shared resource, you know, make sure to add a self in front of it. And for the task of number one, let's just append the one string onto the shared resource. And for the task number two here, let's say self dot shared resource and let's do something crazy like remove everything from your shared resource and then finally for the third task we can say shelf uh, self dot shared resource that's really hard to say let's add a couple of different values onto this array such as three four and five and six right it doesn't matter what's going on inside of here you know all of these three tasks are doing something pretty different to your shared resource this guy is adding something like a one and this guy is just removing everything and this guy is doing something else uh, you'll see that every time you run your application the tasks are actually finished in a different order you know now it's saying one three two but it could be pretty much any permutation of these three different numbers let me try to run it again and see if i get something a little bit different so one two and three now and well you see this shared resource here right if you have a lot of threads that are you know doing a lot of crazy things and if they're modifying a shared resource kind of like what you're seeing here if you're not doing it carefully and you're accessing that same shared resource it can actually crash your application or at the very least the results of modifying that shared resource can kind of result in something very very unexpected so you don't exactly want to do this if you're accessing the same shared resource, or at least that's my understanding of uh, the dispatch group and you know why you would want to use a semaphore instead. So let me go ahead and illustrate the semaphore example. And I guess I'll just comment out all that code there. So the semaphore is actually very similar. You want to call the semaphore.wait and also the let's see semaphore dot signal so the weight is very similar to the enter and the signal is the leave function down below and let's see i'll try to do the same thing so let me copy this guy and let's just paste it somewhere up here and let's say i want to make sure that everything is executed in order right for example I want to make sure that this task is finished first and this task is finished second and that way this uh, the shared resource is only accessed kind of one at a time I can guarantee that using a semaphore now the way I'm going to actually do that is to make sure I call the wait inside of this function here so let's say I want to call uh, let's say dispatch queue so I want to create a background queue first uh, dispatch queue.global and let's use a background queue right here and then dispatch queue.async let's execute this fetch code on a background thread and before I execute the actual fetch I want to call a wait on the semaphore and I'm going to cut this and paste it inside of this dispatch queue async and then finally I want to call a semaphore dot signal like so now, if I do this a couple of more times, you'll hopefully see the pattern that I want to show you. So let me do a wait and a wait like that. I want to remove this and remove this as well. So let me just comment out this bottom line right here and try to run our code now. Uh, this is going to recall or require a self in front of that fetch call. Hit the fix here and try to run this again. Hopefully I can see one, two, three, or maybe I'll see one, one, one. So one, two, and three. And let's try to run this again. You'll see that this bit of code should run, but I believe this guy is going to require you to actually paste that in here instead. So sometimes the wait and the signal code is a little bit confusing, but that's what you gotta do. Uh, you're going to execute the fetch, it's going to wait, and it's going to uh, finish fetching image one. So you see one, two, and three. This way you can guarantee that this is actually executed after the signal is complete here. Okay, so now that we have our semaphore code fully typed out, uh, let me rerun this just one more time to confirm that I'm gonna get the printing out of one, two, and three every time I run this application. 
So what this really means is if you want to access a shared resource inside of some kind of background queue, such as this one up here, you can use the semaphore to wait, access your shared resource, call the signal, and then proceed with your other task right over here. Uh, one thing that you might want to do is to confirm that everything is indeed running on a background task. So let's see, start fetching images. And I just want to make sure that I see this down below first, uh, just to confirm that all this stuff is actually executed afterwards. So that's indeed what I'm getting right over here. And then finally, I would like to just reiterate that if you have a lot of different threads or tasks accessing a shared resource, you never want to modify that shared resource through all of these threads because the result of that is very tricky and very unexpected and it might eventually crash your application. Alrighty, everybody, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. If you wanna download the source code for everything that you saw in today's lesson, I'm going to include a link down in the description below. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing for this channel. That's gonna be it for today's lesson. Hopefully I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye, guys.